Hi friends. Just getting one more thing ready and then we'll get started. Ta-da! Part two happening now. Just let me just set up my computer so I can answer questions as they come in. I think that that should work. Here we go. Turning off the sound. Ta-da! Oops. Part I can hear myself better. Okay, can you all, can somebody that's here give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can hear me? Hi, Marianne. I just sent you some mail today. Hey, Stephanie, awesome. I can hear you. Oh, great, I'm so glad. Um, so I'm gonna take this off and get started. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, Sorry you can't see my face at the same time. Um, that is some advanced level stuff that I hope to be able to do one day, but I can't do today. Um, I finished my ice cream cones. I was so impressed that so many people had finished them last week. I had a busy week. My family um, and I went to Seattle and uh, I brought my embroidery and I did not work on it. Um, because I was busy chasing around two little kids. So um, I finished, actually finished my ice cream cones this afternoon. And um, I was so excited that there were people that had finished them. And there's even somebody who finished the whole thing, which was incredible. Um, I love it. I don't, there's almost nothing I like more than hopping onto Instagram and noticing that somebody has um, posted something with drop and use the hashtag drop glass samplers. I love it. I love it so much. Um, so I'm behind some people and some people are here with me and some people are just starting and wherever you are, that is okay. And if you, um, we're hoping to come today, but you can't stay and you just wanted to pop in, that's totally fine because I'm going to post everything. Um, I'll post this whole video to, to the Instagram grid and also to YouTube like I did last time. Um, what I haven't figured out how to do is to adjust the camera so that it's not, um, so that it's horizontal instead of, um, so, well, let's say, so it's landscape mode instead of portrait on YouTube. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but maybe I will this week. Maybe this is the week. Um, what I'm going to do this week is a Dole Whip cone. So I was talking to Fun Youngs, who's here, who is um, my friend Stephanie, and we, we've been friends for a long time. We used to take tap dance lessons together when we were, I don't know how old we were, five, um, Calista Marie School of Dance, and we um, wore green and white striped leotards, and our teacher played a record and smoked cigarettes during class. <laughs> tells you how long ago that was and um anyway we've been friends for a long time and she was just in Michigan where we both grew up and she said she had a Dole Whip and I was there a couple weeks ago and didn't have a Dole Whip and I'm very envious so the soft serves are what I'm going to work on this week between now and Sunday and I'm going to start with this one today I'm going to do a back stitch in yellow and then I'm going to go back in and um do a whipped back stitch to make it look a little fluffier. So I'm gonna do the back stitch with this thread. This is a really nice, very subtly variegated um, pearl cotton. I'll turn it this way so it works for portrait and landscape. Um, and it's from the Picnic Pearl Cotton Collection. Um, sorry, there's a bit of a glare there from my um, light but it's from the picnic pro cotton collection that i put together with wonderfill and it's um wonderfill number ezm1059 in case you're buying them individually 
Um, and of course you could use whatever color thread you want. So I'm gonna do the back stitch on this cone. So this is, uh, when I was drawing it, I was thinking of a soft serve cone. The, um, there are folks on Instagram that have been doing these ice cream cones in satin stitch, which looks amazing. I can't even, I can't even, it looks so cool, especially the hot fudge areas look so great in satin stitch. I don't think I'm gonna do a satin stitch except for the cherries. I'm going to do a satin stitch cherry. Um, when I was in on Bainbridge Island earlier this week with my kiddos, we took the ferry from Bainbr from Seattle out to Bainbridge Island and got ice cream at a place out there that I cannot remember the name of. I'll put it, I'll try to put it in the notes if they have an Instagram or in the comments when I post this thing to the grid. Um, we got ice cream there and they put a whopper on top of each cone, which I thought was so cool. It looked really good. You know, I love the look of a scoop with a, um, a dot on top. Um, and it's more delicious than a maraschino cherry. Maraschino cherries are, are actually quite gross, especially the, the typical ones that you would get at it, like a, at an ice cream shop. I mean, some of the the nice, like the Luxardo cherries that you put in a Manhattan, those are delicious. And they're actually really good on ice cream, but that's not what you typically get. Did you know that a lot of the cherries that get turned into maraschino cherries are grown in the county where I grew up and where my friend Stephanie grew up? And in order to get them to be um, that fake red color which is actually a color I really like they're bleached and all the color and flavor is removed and then new flavor and new color is introduced um so y'all I am doing a two-handed trick so I have my embroidery hoop is attached to my table you can't see it but I'm pointing over there with a with a wood clamp I have it I have my embroidery in a really big hoop. I'll post a picture of it in stories tomorrow, but it's a really big 12 inch um, quilting hoop. And in order to fit it into the quilting hoop, I'm just gonna turn this for a second. There you can see the top of it and the um, clamp. In order to fit it in there, I, I sewed my embroidery onto a piece of flannel. And um, the reason I did that is so that um, I would have a bigger surface area so it would fit in a 12 inch hoop and so that I could clamp it to the table because I thought that that would be the, oops, there's some of my hair, gross. Um, that would be the easiest way to do these stitch alongs with an overhead, hi, overhead camera, hi, um, with an overhead camera. So it's clamped on and um, once in a while, my right hand is coming up to send the needle back but it's what's great is I can send the needle up with my right hand and send it down with my left hand. And it's a little clunky, but I think I'm pretty, I think I'm getting it. I used to be better at this. I haven't done this in a while. It's quite efficient once you get the hang of it, once you kind of get into a rhythm. So Steph was saying that she can't wait to see the whip back stitch. So if you've taken any of my creative bug classes or an in-person class, you know, I'm always demonstrating. Um, uh, sorry, my hair keeps falling out. That's unpleasant. Um, I'm always demonstrating the filled running stitch. But it turns out that any embroidery stitch can be filled. So really, you're just embroidering and then you're going back through and doing um, kind of weaving in and out of those stitches with another color of thread. I'm just realizing, I think that this soft serve would look really nice with, um, I think it would look so good with a chain stitch as well. You know, the, the thing about soft serve, it depends where you get it. Um, you know, if you get soft serve, at the Dairy Cream where I used to work. And I actually had a dream about working there again the other night. Oh my gosh, that, that place was really influential in my life. 
um, the the way that it's extruded, the extruder has kind of a um, kind of ridges, so it comes out a bit ridged, uh, ribbed. And um, if you get it at the Dairy Queen, the Dairy Queen with a Q, um, which some people call the DQ, of course, um, it's a smooth extruder that the ice cream comes through. So, but I like the way that it looks with the kind of ribbed look. And so um, I think that, that doing, maybe I'll do this one with a chain stitch outline. I think that would look really cool. I'm gonna go back in with a different color to do the sprinkles. And I have a lot to say about ice cream sprinkles. Then I'll talk about that when I get across that bridge when I get to it, but I'm looking forward to telling you all about it. Um, all right, so I'm sending that needle back down. And since my hoop is attached to the table, I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut underneath. I'm gonna go back and tie those together later. I have another needle threaded already because I, I used my own advice and threaded my own needles. So I'm gonna just pick up where I left off. And I am not worrying about tying those threads on the back. They are likely gonna get messy and I don't care. I really don't care. If you are a person who does care, then you could flip the whole thing, take it out of the clamp, flip it over and tie it off or work your threads back in. But guess what? This is not a 1950s home economic class and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Twinkle coating, yes, Stephanie's saying twinkle coat, exactly, that's what I wanna talk about. Um, gosh, I just wanna jump right into it right now, but I'm gonna stay on the topic of Dole Whip. Have y'all had Dole Whip? Um, is Michigan the only place that serves Dole Whip outside of Disney World? Probably not, right? Can I get a Dole Whip anywhere in Portland? Anybody in Portland know where I can get a Dole Whip? It's so good, it's all, I believe it's dairy free and the best flavor is pineapple. It also comes in raspberry and maybe maybe orange, I can't remember. For sure the best flavor is pineapple. It is so delicious. And I know they sell it at Disney World. I think I wanna say I've also heard of people getting it in Hawaii. And a lot of the small independent ice cream shops near where I grew up also sell it. And you can get it as a swirl with vanilla and that is especially good. Oh, Sharon's saying they have Dole Whip in New Jersey. I've had pineapple swirled with strawberry, Stephanie says. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. So good, man, I love ice cream. I had a really good ice cream at this place called, I think it was called Maggie Moo's in, in Seattle. It was delicious. It was, I had two scoops, uh, a raspberry chip and um, cookies and cream. And they were both really, 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 really good. But you guys, a two scoop, I mean, it was a waffle cone, two scoops in a waffle cone, supposedly homemade ice cream. It did taste really good. It tasted really special. It was $11.50. That's a lot. Food prices are crazy. Molly Moon, Molly Moon, Lenny's Llama says it's Molly Moon. It was so good. And I, I don't mean to complain because it really was one of the better ice cream cones I've had all summer, but shoosh, holy cow. I thought salt and straw was expensive which it is. Okay, so I I backstitched this whole Dole Whip, but I want it to stand out a little more. So I'm gonna use this, this takes up the whole screen. This is some wool thread that um, that Just Yarn sent me, um, justyarn.com, and this is their array wool that they a lot of people use for weaving, and I think maybe knitting although it's really fine it's finer than cruel thread um and they sent it to me because they thought it might be great for embroidery so this is actually my first time testing it and i'm excited to test it so i did a back stitch um for the back stitch i used um uh this pearl cotton from wonderful this is from the picnic pearl cotton kit that i uh set that i created 
Um, and now I'm gonna go back in and fill it in with this um, array. Let me just make sure that's what it's called. Yeah, the array yarn. And this one is called Marigold Number no. One. And I have that in a dull tapestry needle. Before I show you how to do that, um, Stephanie's saying a place near her work has buttered popcorn ice cream. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I love buttered popcorn jelly bellies. I also used to work at a shop that sold buttered popcorn jelly bellies. It was a tea, like a tea shop and also a gift shop in the same hometown that I grew up in. And they sold jelly bellies and I used to get some on my way home from work every day. I feel like the world is divided into people who love buttered popcorn jelly bellies and people who hate jelly belly popcorn flavor. I love them. I think they're delicious. The one I don't like is pear. Ugh, so gross. Um, Muffy Bolding saying we have shops here in LA that carry a Dole Whip. So delicious. Yum. I just want to eat ice cream all day. All day long. Okay, so now I'm going to pick a spot to start. I think I'm going to start here. And the trick is always getting this dull tapestry needle through the fabric. But now I have. So I'm actually just going to go... Um, under every stitch and I'm gonna go from so here's the ice cream swirl I'm gonna go from the center of the squirrel from the inside of the squirrel <laughs> I just said squirrel I meant swirl um, from the inside out my youngest son Harvey says swirl instead of swirl and squirrel swirls my gosh, she's cute. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going through every stitch. And you could, you there. You know, there's endless ways to do a filled stitch. You could go in and out like that. I'm going from the inside to the outside each time. The thing about Dole Whip that makes it so good is that it's not um it's not icy like sorbet. So I didn't eat I didn't eat dairy for a long time. Um for for 10 years I didn't eat any dairy. And let me tell you, I missed ice cream so much. Um and you know, I ate a lot of like cashew milk ice cream, etc. It's it's pretty good, but it, there's nothing like ice cream. But anyway, Dole Whip doesn't have dairy in it. Um, but it doesn't taste kind of icy like sorbet. I I have never really liked sorbet. I always think that sorbet is just, it's just kind of too sweet for me, which is saying something because I am a person who will take down a lick of or a pixie stick. Um, but something about sorbet I just don't love. I think it's because I want it to be more like ice cream. I want it to be creamy like ice cream. Um, but it's not. And, but Dole Whip is. It's creamy. I think it's because that it has that kind of airiness from being a soft serve. It's delicious. So my thread, you can see how my, well, you can't see it here. Let me show you on the screen. It's getting all kind of twisted up from, from doing that in and out motion and um, each time. So sometimes you have to kind of take it out and just coax out the twist so that it doesn't tangle up on you. So, um, I don't think I mentioned this before, that I'm going under each stitch as if I'm going under a bridge, but I'm not going through the fabric. So the only time this needle went through the fabric is at the very beginning, right here when I came up. And then I'm gonna go under there again when I finish this part. And, um, Then I'll go up to the second layer of the swirl cone, or the swirl, as Harvey would say. Go, going under here now. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm gonna push my needle back down again and go down. Okay, I'm checking the um, comments every so often. So if anybody has a question about ice cream or embroidery, I guess we could talk about embroidery. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Just kidding. You can ask me a question about embroidery. You can ask me anything. If it's too personal, I'll just say, that's too personal. But you're welcome to ask me anything you like during these stitch-alongs. Um, I wish so much that we were all hanging out in person. And I am working on, um, slowly working on um, organizing some in-person events. One of these days, we'll all get together. Um, but even though we're not all in person, we are all together here on this Instagram forum. So if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, where did I get Harvey's name? That's a good question. I really like the name Harvey. Um, he's um, He is also named after Harvey Milk. Who was the first openly gay mayor of San Francisco. I'm glad you like it. I really love his name too. Okay, so now I'm coming up to this third one. I love all of the um, old fashioned names. You know, at my son's preschool, there's a Frank and a George and a Harvey. And uh, um, I can't think of any of the girls' names off the top of my head, but I remember once we were in a class, a music class, Harvey and I, a kids' music class before the pandemic times, and there was a little girl named Nancy. <laughs> and I thought, oh man, that kid is 100% named after her grandma. Okay. Oh, thank you. Leo's named after my grandpa. Okay, there we go. Um, Ta-da! So that's done. I love this thread, actually. So just to repeat, this is the, um, the thread I use for filling the stitches is this giant cone. I have enough to last 100 years. Um, and it's from this company called Gist Yarn. You might be familiar with it if you're a weaver or a knitter. Um, and this is their line of thread called Array. And it is, the color is Marigold. Marigold 1. I wonder if they're going to have a, if there's a Marigold 2. That would be fun. Okay, I'm going to move on, moving on to the sprinkles. And the sprinkles... Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with the sprinkles in these two colors. And these are also from the picnic collection that I curated with Wonderful. Um, and these are my two favorite colors from that collection. Um, this one is Easy M1055 and this one is 1021, Easy M1021. And I like them because they're the most obviously variegated. I think I'm also going to use this one which is from the um, yo-yo collection that I put together with Wonderful. And this one is called 1043. I love, you know, I the, I use this yellow for the back stitch, and I think it's a really great color. Even subtly variegated colors are fun to use because they change and they add a lot of um, texture and interest to your um, to your embroidery, but I really love these that are multicolored. And the reason I'm using them for this um, is, uh, let me grab the green one first. So um, starting out with this one, Easy M1021, is because I wanted it to look like this stuff that they used to serve at the Dairy Cream, and I'm excited, I'm sad to say they did not have it there when I was visiting this summer. This stuff called Twinkle Coat. So please tell me in the comments if you've had Twinkle Coat, besides Stephanie, who I know has had it. Stephanie, did you work at the Dairy Cream also, or was it just me? I can't remember if we worked there together. I want to say you worked at the House of Flavors, which was the Dairy Cream's competition. Um, anyhow, Twinkle Coat was a combination of sprinkles and these kind of candied praline peanuts um crushed up peanuts and it was so good and so you could get any cone a soft serve 
or I guess a hard serve ice cream, a hard pack ice cream, old fashioned ice cream. You could get any of those with um, a twinkle coat on it. So I am adding these green um, sprinkles here on the Dole Whip. I don't want it to go, I don't want it to all be green. So since I've got a long um, thread here, I'm also gonna go in and do some of these outside um, running stitches because it's just efficient. I wanna use up this thread, but I don't wanna have all green here in the in this particular cone. So I'm just gonna kind of skip around. This is what I did when I used the, um, uh when i when i was doing the abc sprinkle sampler i just kind of skipped around with different colors steph is saying that she worked at chez moi in pentwater where we grew up oh man chez moi remember when everyone had those embroidered bags that they sold with your name on them i still have two of them that place it that was a real status symbol in our small little town <laughs> like oh they sold they sold custom embroidered bags um, machine embroidered and you could get, you know, a little toiletries bags and bigger shoulder bags, a curl, a bag for your curling iron. It was a real 1980s kind of dreamscape. I don't think it's there anymore. Um, that's cool. I didn't know you worked there, stuff. I thought I really had you pegged as a house of flavors girl. Shows what I know. Bad memory. Um, I saw that you can buy that twinkle coat at this place um, in Wisconsin that has a mail order. And Steffi's saying that you could also buy it at um, on Amazon, of course. You can buy everything on Amazon, I suppose. Um, I might get some. I'm going to make some cardamom ice cream this weekend for my cookbook club. And the next weekend, I'm going up to the mountain with some friends, and I'm going to bring, uh, we're staying in a cabin, I'm going to bring my ice cream maker out again, and I was thinking I might get some twinkle coat and some cones and have, like, a real ice cream social with my, with my pals up on the mountain, and I think it would be a good occasion to buy some actual twinkle coat for so good it's so good it's, it's crunchy I love sprinkles I mean I think of sprinkles as being something that's for little kids um because they don't have much flavor but they have such good texture I buy my sprinkles in bulk from um this company called nuts I think it's called nuts.com I have a giant quart size ball jar full of sprinkles um Mainly because I make Dutch babies a lot, and I often put them on Dutch baby for my kids. And, you know, sometimes you're just having a day, and a little bit of sprinkles on your oatmeal or yogurt or something, it just makes things better. And I know there are parents out there that don't let their kids have any artificial coloring and sugar, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure they're full of carn carnauba, carn carnauba wax. Is that how you say that? Anyway, I am not that parent. I am someone who likes colorful things. And gosh, I, you know, I worked at an ice cream place. I also grew up next to a hardware store that sold penny candy. That was um, literally right next door to the house I grew up in. I used to go there after school. I used to shake money out of my parents' piggy bank and go there after school and buy Tootsie Rolls and lick -a maids and all kinds of candy. And um, I turned out just fine. <laughs> um, oof, this thread. Come over to the side and put some more green ones in. Toward the end of my tenure, so to speak, at um, <laughs> toward the end of my tenure at the Dairy Cream, they got this thing called a flavor booster or something. I can't remember if that was what it was called, and it was like this kind of tube, sort of like um, it's like sort of like an IV tube or something that attached to the ice cream extruder, kind of ice cream spigot. And you could, you press a button and out would squirt 
one or another flavor of artificial flavor. So like blue raspberry or um, cherry, you know, they're all kind of gross, um, but they really appeal to kids. And I, um, I think a lot of places have that still. So, but what happens is the, the ice cream comes out in a swirl with this like ribbon of artificial flavored syrup. Um, to me, that's a bridge too far. I'm, I'm a yes to sprinkles. I am a no to whatever that flavor thing is. Um, would I, can I show you the back of my work? Yes, I'll show the back of this um, at the end of the stitch along tonight. I will definitely show it. And um, it's really, it's messy. Um, you can, you might have just noticed. So I, I ended the green and now I'm coming back up with this um, pink color. And the color I'm using now is the Easy M1055. I'll show it for landscape and portrait. Um, and when I end, I just put my needle back down when I have about this much thread left. So it's about two inches and I just cut the thread right at the needle. Um, so then when I flip the hoop over, I just tie the threads together like an overhand knot. Um, and, uh, it works out if, if this was something that I was going to wash in a washing machine, I would not do that because um, I'd be worried about them coming undone because some of the time when you do that, it they, um, they the threads kind of catch on the next bit of embroidery and it gets all tangly. But I'm not going to wear this and I'm probably never gonna wash it in a washing machine. So I'm not worried about it at all. Oh, some questions. Mystery cups were the best. Yes, mystery bars. I was talking about those in the last Stitch Along stuff. Um, the ones who inspire you the most creatively, who are my favorite embroidery artists. First, I'll talk about the mystery bars again, and you're, um, you might have heard me talking about this last time. So the mystery bars at the Dairy Cream were these things that we would put all the mistakes in. So if you made somebody a mint chip, but they really ordered strawberry cheesecake, side note, strawberry cheesecake, what a great ice cream flavor you would put it in this box. And then we would, once it was really firm and full, we would slice it into, um, put put popsicle sticks in it and slice it into bars and dip them in the chocolate cone coating and sell them as mystery bars. And they were amazing. You never knew what you were gonna get. It could be Dole Whip smashed up against uh, cookies and cream flurry smashed up against, um, you know, praline pecan hard pack ice cream. Um, smashed up against blue raspberry swirl something or other but you know they're always good everything was good and even together everything was good yum 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 one of my so to answer Muffy Boulding's um, question who are my favorite embroidery artists and the ones who inspire me the most creatively my fav I have a lot of favorite artists. Many of my favorite artists are not embroidery artists. One of my favorite, um, I'd say one of my top favorite artists is this painter named Carrie James Marshall, who lives in Chicago, um, an African-American um, painter whose paintings um, depict the African-American experience and I, there, there were these huge oil paintings that are it's really powerful and beautiful and I've always been a huge fan of his work I love the way he combines text and imagery and sort of realism and um, symbolism and it's just so good I really I'm a huge fan of his work I saw the retrospective of his work a couple years ago at the MCA the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago and it was it was so good I look at that retrospective book all the time. Um, one of my favorite embroidery artists, probably my favorite, is this um, Dutch artist named Tilika Schwartz. And her work, um, sort of abstract, often sort of diaristic, or autobiographical. Um, they, to me, they seem sort of like 
a sketchbook that, you know, they they have sort of a rambling quality that I really, I love. I first saw her work in person. I'd not heard of her work. And then I saw it in person at the um, Museum of Art and Design in New York City at their old location. They had an embroidery show and it just blew me away. It's so, it's so powerful. Um, Stephanie's asking, how did people th um, finish their threads in the past? And that is a great question. So uh, that that leads me to how I fell in love with embroidery and how I learned embroidery. And um, so I learned how to embroider in a feminist art history class. And um, I, I read a book about the history of embroidery, um, a feminist perspective on the history of embroidery called The Subversive Stitch by Rosika Parker. And I was really interested in the way that embroidery was used as a way of um, sort of teaching how to be um, an obedient and quiet girl. And girls of a certain class um, were taught embroidery as a way of being taught how to be seen and not heard and how to have sort of um, devotion to your family and um, patience, all the things that make for a, a virtuous girl. And um, as you were embroidering, you were, you also were making an artifact that showed your family and other people um, your skill as an embroiderer and also your um, sort of feminine virtues. And I really loved the, uh, the way that, um, many artists have sort of flipped that on its head and used embroidery to tell a different kind of story about a different, um, kind of femininity. And so, um, so I didn't, I didn't take that class thinking I would make a bunch of embroidery at all. I took that class cause I was a women's study minor and, um, but then along the way, I really fell in love with the practice of embroidery. So um, through learning about the history, I wanted, I wanted to learn how to do it as well. And I wanted to learn how to do it in a different way. So, so traditionally, embroidery is meant to be perfect on the front. So here's an area. See that blob? That is not perfect. That, is a little, that would be an imperfection. And if this was, you know, in the 1800s or 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 earlier, the 18th century, going forward that, you know, a lot of people would, would say that that needed to be restitched or redone and that this was sloppy. I would not get good marks if I was in a, um, a finishing school doing this sort of embroidery. However, um, uh, I'm not this, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm using embroidery as a way of drawing, or as a way of coloring, and it doesn't matter that it's messy or not. I think I, I, I I started out um, my art career as someone who made drawings and photographs, and I and I still think of myself as someone um, as an artist who draws. And embroidery is a way of drawing, just like drawing with a pencil or a marker. And just like you can use a marker or a pencil and make a thick line or a really messy line, same is true with embroidery. You could do it neatly or messy. Um, but to answer your question, traditionally the threads on the back sh um, were also meant to be as neat and tidy as the front. And so the threads on the back would be woven back in. And so sometimes if you look at an embroidery, it's the same. Um, you, it's sometimes hard to tell the back from the front because it's so neat and tidy. Anyway, that's a long winded way of answering that question. Um, to complete the look of this twinkle coat, I'm going to add some um, beads. So I got, I went downstairs and got one of these sparkle kits from the shop inventory downstairs. And in it are some of these tiny little glass beads that sort of look like nuts. So I'm going to add those. And to do that, I'm going to use, um, a tiny needle and, um, some, just some sewing thread. This is just the kind of thread you'd use on a sewing machine. And to protect the thread, to protect the, um, to, to keep the thread from accidentally breaking when I sew on these glass beads, um, the glass beads 
these are little seed beads. I don't think these do, but some beads have a really sharp edge because they're glass. Um, and so I always like to thread, um, I, excuse me, I always like to wax the thread that I'm using with beads first. And I'm using this Dutch Baby um, So Fine Thread Gloss because it smells good. It smells like, mm, it smells like vanilla and maple syrup. Yum. Um, so I'm gonna put my thimble back on and I'm just gonna come up from underneath and get one bead on my needle. Hope that it goes through the needle, it goes over the eye of the needle and it did, hooray. I'm just gonna go back down right where I started. I've, this is my first time in all the um, 11 years of drop cloth samplers, this is the first time I've ever used beads on one of the samplers. Today is the day. Um, Muffy is asking, did I plan to start an embroidery business? No, I did not. I did not at all. I, 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 um, was teaching at Squam in New Hampshire and, uh, all the teachers got a free table at this end of session, um, at the end of the retreat. Um, there was a craft sale and all the teachers, um, got a free table and I, at the time I was making these really detailed, um, look at that, that bead is too small for this needle. Too bad, I'm gonna use, maybe this one will go on. Yay, it's pink. Um, all the teachers got a table at this end of session sale and I was making these really detailed um, embroideries that were, I thought would be too high of a price point for the sale, so I didn't bring those. Um, but I did, um, bring some printed embroidery samplers, which I, I brought, I, I designed the original sampler, which is still the best seller. And, um, for the purposes of going to that, to that workshop and selling things at the sale afterwards. And I did not ever expect to print any more than I made for that sale. At the time I had um, five jobs. I was teaching at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, um, where I was an adjunct professor. I was also an adjunct professor at a school in Chicago called Columbia College, another art school. And um, I was the director of a textile department at an art center, which is where I printed, screen printed all of the first drop cloth sampler embroidered embroidery patterns. And I was also working at a frame shop where, side note, I met Dusty Baker, the manager of the Cubs, and I was also a nanny. I had so many jobs, and um, and I, I definitely wasn't thinking of even, um, I, I wasn't thinking at all that it would be a business. I thought maybe it would be a fun way to earn some extra cash while I was teaching in New Hampshire at this sale. But... Um, I came home from that. I sold a few. I didn't sell like an overwhelming amount at the sale, but a few of the people that bought the samplers um, had blogs. And one of those people was Charlotte Lyons, who has the blog um, House Ren Studio. I don't know if she still has a blog, but she definitely has a her own Etsy shop with embroidery patterns. So she bought it and um, she went home and blogged about it. And so did um, Pam Garrison. Pam Garrison wasn't there, but she's a friend of Charlotte. And so Charlotte bought one for Pam as well. And Pam posted about it on her blog. And then another woman named, I believe, I hope I'm not getting her name wrong, but I believe her name was Jenny Doe. She also posted about it. And my email blew up with people that saw it on their blogs and wanted one of their own. And so um, I started an Etsy shop in my mom and dad's house because I was there when this all happened. So I started an Etsy shop on my mom and dad's dial-up internet connection. And I got back to Chicago where I lived at the time and I had like hundreds of orders. So it sort of went... I, I don't want to say viral because it wasn't like I sold millions, but I sold a lot. And, um, but I still thought, oh, this is going to be like, you know, this is cool. I'm making, 
um, some more sales, but I, I still wasn't thinking it would be a business. I thought, you know, I already had five jobs. I didn't, I wasn't interested in another job. And then my then partner, um, got a job in New York city. And so I quit all five of my jobs and I moved to New York city to be with her. And I didn't have a job. I didn't even have one job in New York city. I left five jobs to move to New York city with her. And so I thought, well, maybe I'm going to kind of pour myself into this, um, situation. And I did. And the rest is history. That was, that was in New York. I designed the next sampler there. That's where, um, I met Melanie Fallick and, um, started working on my book. And then I can't remember which came first, the book or the creative bug. Um, and then, um, I filmed that first creative bug workshop based on the original sampler and, um, it's still, the original sampler is still the bestseller. I am truly shocked that I'm still selling copies of that, um, every single week. Oh, thanks Muffy. Um, Trish is asking if the, um, thread conditioner dries out and the answer is no, it does not. It's just, it's beeswax. I, I have some beeswax that was my grandfather's. Well, here's the thing. I am a sentimentalist. So I actually have my great grandmother's sewing wax. She has a little, you know, just a little chunk, nothing fancy, nothing like this in a special tin. Um, just a little chunk of beeswax that she used to, to thread her wax, just like I'm doing. Um, I have that and that I inherited from my mom who inherited it from her mom who inherited it from her mom. And it's still, it's still soft and I still thread, I still wax my needles with it sometimes. And I also have a big chunk of beeswax that was my grandfather's that he used for making impressions um, because he was a dentist. So no, beeswax, in my, in my experience anyways, darn it, that one doesn't fit. In my experience, anyhow, um, beeswax does not dry out and you do not need to keep it in any sort of special way. Um, feel free to chime in if others have had a different experience. So I am loving the way this looks like twinkle coat. It really does. Okay, I'm going to add a few more beads. I can see where I've missed a few spots of um, sprinkles, but that's okay. The other part of that origin story, um, which I haven't really talked a lot about, is that... Um, so my partner got a job in New York City in the spring. I stayed until she, she moved to New York in the fall. Um, and then I stayed in Chicago for that fall semester because I had just been promoted at the Art Institute. And in order to receive my promotion, I had to stay for um, the next semester. So I stayed for that semester and taught and um, I was still working at the art center as well in the textile department, um, but um, not as much. I was no longer the director, um, but I still was teaching classes there. And so many mornings a week, um, I would, first of all, I would go in the afternoons, I would go to the thrift store and buy sheets. All the original drop cloth samplers were printed on white cotton sheets that I bought at the thrift store because it was the cheapest way to get um, white fabric. So I'd get these white cotton sheets. I would wash them, bleach them to make sure they were really white. And then um, I would get up really early in the morning and like at four and ride my bike from where I lived. Um, my bike loaded up with um, white sheets and I would ride my bike to the art center 
And at the art center, I would print, 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 print. I would print hundreds of copies of the original sampler. And then, um, you know, print, 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 and then unpin them once they were dry, fold them all up, load them back onto my bike and be gone by seven before anybody else got to the art center so that it wasn't in, in anybody's way. So that, that was the time that I could use the studio and not be interrupted. And it was the time where I could use the studio and have all five print tables to myself. So I could print a lot really quickly because I knew that I was going to be moving to New York and I, um, and I knew I wasn't going to have a print studio in New York. So I wanted to move to New York with a lot of inventory which I did. <laughs> um, and I did that by waking up at four every morning and riding my bike to the print shop. It's a crazy time. It's a time before I had kids that woke me up at four in the morning. My kids don't do that anymore. Thank goodness. We've all been sleeping in all summer and it's been glorious. Well, sleeping in until eight. My kids woke up at 5 a.m. for so many years. I'm I'm glad they're not currently doing that. I don't want to say that phase is over because I have been, I have jinxed myself too many times as a parent and I have been a parent for seven years and I'm, seven years is enough to know that kids are fickle and just when you think they're going to zig, they zag. Um, a lot of the stitches that I learned originally, Muffy's asking so many good questions. Thanks Muffy. Um, I'm going to send this needle down because I'm almost out of thread. Sending it down to the other side. Um, a lot of the stitches I learned, I taught myself. And I taught myself from the um, Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Needlework. That is, um, except for my book, of course. That is the book, that is one of the books I always recommend for a way of learning embroidery stitches. It's so good. Um, I also really like Betty Barnden's Embroidery Stitch Bible, although I'm not a fan of the title. Parenting keeps you on your toes, that's for darn sure. I hope it lasts too. Um, the last thing that I want to show before I sign off for the day is I want to show the backside of this. So if you're a person who likes a neat and tidy backside, um, you're going to want to sit down and brace yourself because this one's going to be kind of messy. This is for Pearl Lou Who. So let me undo the whoops, lefty Lucy. That's at an odd angle. I think I can just wiggle it out. Sorry everyone. Sorry to make y'all um car sick. So there is the back. Um, whoops. Let's see. I think you can do that. So you can see some of these. Oh, there's the needle that I sent back. And since I sent this beetle needle back, I'm just going to weave it through this kind of mess. I used to always nod off. And lately I have become a big fan of weaving the stitches in because it's actually faster than tying a knot. So here's where the pink threads ended and here's where the green th threads ended. I could tie each of these off individually, just overhand knots as if you're tying your shoes. But since they're so close to each other, I'm just gonna tie them together. I'm sure I'm positive that there are people that would re-thread each of those onto a needle and weave the stitches back through. I'm not going to. I um, definitely not going to do that. But there is a close up of the very messy back of my embroidery. You can see it's quite tangly. The back of my embroidery is often really tangly. Here's another one that I've been working on. This is the embroidery for the um, for Lovecraft magazine. Um, also quite messy, but it's not as messy. You can see these. This has these big. Um, dangling bits. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, flip this over again and give you a close up of my Dole Whip with Twinkle Coat. I think it looks pretty cool and I can't wait to see how you all are going to do this. Um, 
I'm gonna put this down for now and I'll be back on Sunday um the stitch along is originally scheduled for this Saturday at noon um I something came up and in my own life and so I'm rescheduling it to Sunday at 11 a.m. and I hope that works for people um I'm sorry about the reschedule um I have to um do something for a friend of mine that day that can't get rescheduled so um the I'll post about that on Instagram on the grid so you don't have to remember it um but I just wanted to let everybody know that it will it will not be on Sunday it, or excuse me it will not be on Saturday it'll be on Sunday let me check here. There's a couple more questions. Uh, my plan is to ask each member of my family, myself included, what their two top flavors are, and I'll stitch those. What? I love that idea. Um, that is such a cool idea. Hi, Tina. Thank you so much, Muffy Bowling, for asking so many fun questions. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I've always... Um, I've always wanted to be interviewed and like do a rapid fire interview questions. I think that would be so fun. I love that when they do that on podcasts. Um, one of my favorite podcasts is Didn't I Just Feed You? It's a show about feeding kids. I love cooking. I love a cooking podcast. And they often ask their guests rapid fire questions. And that is my that is a bucket list item of mine to be asked rapid fire questions on a podcast. So um, it felt a little bit like that. So Muffy, thanks for making my dreams come true tonight. That was super duper fun. Um, and I'll see you guys all again on Sunday. Um, Carol is asking, what was the name of the original stitching pattern? It didn't have a name when I started it, but now it's called the original sampler drop, the original drop class sampler. Okay. I'll see you all later.